What did the mommy buffalo tell her boy when he went off to school? Bison. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails, a Grand Arena story. We continue my trek through Podfest, where I'm focusing more on the convention that I'm at, the podcast convention, than actually playing GAC. However, there's some actually really good gameplay here. Uh, on my part, even. <laughs> so, here's the situation. We're facing Zarko. Ooh! I don't know how to say his name. Zarko00 zero zero. seems uh, unnecessary, redundant. I could prefer to think of that as a ghost saying. <laughs> if you guys, if any of you have played Ultima Online, that oh, 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 uh, kind of reminds me of that. So, anyways, he's got more GP than I do. I, I actually have more top shelf mods, though. He's got unmod advantage. Otherwise, he also has a relic advantage, especially in the big relics. It's funny how little I fixated on that this time. I, I had no idea. He had this much of an advantage, but good for him. Hooray for that. Here's the defenses that I placed. You can see I'm trying this Sortie team out with Grievous and T3. A spoiler alert, it has not really worked out well at all. Tried it a couple times, and it's not great. <laughs> I mean, no team comp with Grievous is great. I just, you know, in threes at least. In, in fives, he's great. He's wonderful. But threes... It needs a little work, but you can see I, I placed Dark Killer. I also placed my uh, so my opponent has the first order, like the the first order type pilot, Omicron, and so I placed my own Omicron, like first order type pilot Omicron, because I was pretty sure he wouldn't place his own Star Killer, and I placed my own Star Killer because I think that there's a little bit of RNG there, and so uh, I mean. I think that's what he ended up using to counter. My Star Killer, though, was first order type of this, so we're gonna have to figure something out. Anyways, um, <clears throat> you can see I, I placed three GLs. I placed Sith Eternal with Maul and Crew. I, I'll be very interested to see what he used on that. Probably just did another GL and probably won't give us much information, but one way or another, folks, this is my defense, and I'm sticking to it, apparently. Here's what he placed. Now, he normally places a tough defense, but not not nearly like he, he keeps most of his like really like his A-level teams on offense. And so it surprised me to see some of these teams. So you, you can see he put Basti with uh, with Jedi Master Luke and Watt, which is a comp I haven't seen for a long time. He also has a Dash Han Chewy team. Treya and I mean those, those are some high relics on the Treya squad too. Uh, <clears throat> I mean it's all very good. And then up top, he's got Jedi training Ray with Finn. He's got CLS. He's got uh, a weird Boba team. Uh, so some pretty interesting stuff, folks. Stuff that he usually keeps for offense. So I'm gonna be interested to see how this all fares. You'll note there was no Star Killer here though. He kept Star Killer for offense. In fact. So, before we jump into the actual fighting, guys, just want to remind you, if you want to support this channel for free, all you've got to do is like, subscribe, comment, do something to help me mount the algorithm. We're doing it, guys. We're mounting it. We've got to do it. All of your upvotes, all of your comments in the comments have actually helped a ton. You guys are amazing, and I love all of you. Most of you. Some of you. No. A couple, anyway. <laughs> I'm just playing, guys. I do love you. Thank you all so much for the support. Now, with that being said, let's get to the actual fighting, shall we? All right, here we are, folks. Let me make sure that this isn't the volume of the video itself is not on. There we go. A live check. Now, we're, the first thing we got to do is take out this Ray team. We have Jedi Master Kenobi. Now, now, we have, remember, we have three GLs available for offense. And my opponent doesn't attack until, basically, right until the very, very, very end of the day. So, 
we may as well just start our attacks. So let's uh, let's get moving. I have no idea how fast this is all going to be. I edited all of this stuff on my phone and sent it to myself via Google Drive. It's, it's very interesting. So the idea here, you, you guys have seen me face this Ray Comp before uh, with, with Armor and Hoda. And the thing to keep in mind here, folks, is that I wanted to keep, I wanted to take Mace this time because Mace can theoretically at least apply ability block to Ray. Now, I think I'm gonna start modding Mace with a little bit of potency, actually. I don't know exactly how much potency, but I think, I think that's gonna happen. So, anyways, we, we can also, the cool thing about Mace is we can pass turn meter between him and Cat. So there, there is that. We, we got our ultimate popped right, right on time. Okay, got the damage immunity on Ray going, and you know she's already got Master's training. The important thing was to take out that armor before Master's training, or before the Beskar uh, actually came into effect. So, all right, got she got the whirlwind. I've managed to anticipate when she was going to do that. So I put the damage immunity onto Mace, and you know we're getting ability blocks sometimes. Not, not every time though. It's, uh, it's, it's constantly scary, folks. In fact, so you know, be be sad for me. No. <laughs> All right, we got we got it though. Sixty three. Dropped four banners, but we got through it. It's a very it's a scary comp though, guys. It's a very scary comp. So, all right. Now, now this one, this is actually a comp that I came up with, well, a comp, a counter I came up with back, way back in the day when Jedi Master Luke was still here and Basti. In 3v3, this comp, it was, it was giving people a lot of problems. And so the, the idea here, guys, is just to let Supreme Leader Kylo, like, just have his turn meter reduced all the time by Watt. And when, when that happens, and I guess Jedi Master Luke as well, uh, when that happens, though, he increases his protection and health to such a degree that they can't actually hurt him, and they can't even use Jedi Master Luke's leadership ability because he's not the lead, it's Basti lead. So, uh, all we're doing here, guys, is we're getting to our ult, and it feels miserable because we're ability blocked the whole time because Basti ability blocks on basic, Jedi Master Luke ability blocks just I mean he also increases cooldowns he he ability blocks with his AoE for two turns so eventually though you get into your ult and it kills Watt usually and then you do three pokes you're gonna do three pokes guys because you see those stacks above his head this is something that uh, I, I was telling someone about this and uh, like a, a seasoned a good player didn't know about this so the stacks above his head are uh, like those that's his count for how much he's going to be able to increase mastery with his swipes later. And you only increase that through, you can increase it a little bit by basics, but then the poke is the way you get, you increase it mainly. And, and then you can double it while you're in your ult. So the idea is you do three pokes to increase those stacks, get those stacks as much as you can. And then, and then like poke when you have the opportunity to. Uh, when when they give you the opportunity then when you finally pop your ult again see that 860 that's a huge number we just do aoe's watch how they melt here guys because you're increasing your mastery by a huge amount and now watch what we do two basics almost a million each hit so easy easy solo it, you just gotta you gotta be cautious so okay dash han chewy you guys have seen me do this before do the AoE just to get Grandmaster Yoda back in the game. And mark Chewy because he's the one who's not guarded. We can actually crit Chewy. And, you know, well modded Chewy doesn't have a bunch of tenacity. That <laughs> he does have. He, uh, so Jolie is. Uh, he did trigger Savior. So that, that was a little bit scary. I mean, this, this comp is just scary, guys. Especially with Relic 8 on Han. I mean, dear lord. I want all these relics, guys. I would love them. 55 banners though, we, we got through it. Heart attacks and all. Now how do we beat this Treya squad? Uh, and the, the answer is basically just <laughs> punch them with Dark Trooper, right in the face. Right in the face with Dark Trooper. That's, that's the best way to do it. So, I mean, it's a little bit scary, but as long as you outspeed and everything, you kill Nihilus first, then Treya, and eventually you're gonna have to start hitting Scion, but all right, drop three banners and move right along. 
Right, we've got General Skywalker, and it's like, well, what do we do? Do we risk a fail here, just in case? Like, he, he places, he usually places three GLs, or he places two GLs and Starkiller. And so if you've had Starkiller in the back zone, which I think he's done in the past, I, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, then, then uh, we, we have the teams to deal with that. But, otherwise, I mean, <clears throat> this is a, you know, we, we may as well just take out this General Skywalker this way instead of going through that fiasco. You guys, the few of you who watched the video of me losing to General Skywalker over and over again, uh, know that General Skywalker isn't someone to take lightly in 3v3. He's, he's very tricky to beat, actually. There's not really a great off-meta way to beat him, and... I mean, it's kind of cool the way some people do do the, you know, you. <laughs> there are a couple ways to beat him off meta, including like there's like this really interesting armor lead mall team that I'm gonna start experimenting with probably next 3v3. But uh, the best way, the the most enjoyable way to take out General Skywalker is using Lord Vader, because you get 59, and it takes a while, but it's very satisfying. So, all right, one shot it in the back. He. Threw me for a loop, guys. He put Sith Eternal with Malak in there. So, um, I guess let's uh, not mess with that right now. Uh, hopefully I have that fight. <laughs> I, I hope, hope that that's in there. I think, you know what, I know I know that some of it is. So, first off, guys, this, this one was actually pretty tricky. Because the Echo was 370 speed, which is just a little bit slower than my dash is after his speed bonus. My dash is like 356 right now. So... Uh, you know, 376 with a speed bonus, and then Kira needed to call the mass assist to kill that Echo before, because Lan Lando might have been able to outspeed him, I, I've, I keep making him faster, but with all the turn meter gain, had to kill the Echo, because he's 370 freaking speed, guys, holy balls. So, now, I mean, we can just control Wrecker from now on, I mean... Try to get him stunned as quick as we can. Every time. It works every time. Get that mass debuff on him. Call a mass assist, and he's gone. He gone. Okay, so 57. Wonderful. And now I guess let's let's move on to the next one. Uh, okay, so Moff Gideon. With so this is the Thridian team, of course. Uh, he's got a well modded Commander Luke, Relic Eight, da da da. Of course he does. So now we're gonna reduce turn meter. No note that I I did it a little bit differently this time, guys. I didn't actually do the reduced turn meter thing from Gideon. I just did because Thrawn outspeeds CLS, and because Thrawn outspeeds CLS, all you have to do you just defer the turn, do, do the half step with Gideon. And then Thrawn gets to go. He he fractures CLS, and then you can reduce all the turn meter. So, those of you who watched my live stream today of my third match, I actually did the same match, but I, I did it differently. I did I did it the the stupid way. I forgot that you could do it this this really fun way by deferring the turn meter, letting Thrawn fracture, and then and then reducing turn meter because you can you can see like. Commander Luke just doesn't come out of his fracture, uh, like, uh, until, until, like, toward the end of Chupio's lifespan. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. And then we, we can just fracture Luke again. And, I mean, one, one interesting thing, guys, is, uh, so the gain, the gain turn meter based off of a few different things, but... One of them is, like, if I, if I hit them, if I do debuffs to them and everything, then they, they gain turn meter. But one of the things is, uh, if they blind me, I can't actually do debuffs to them. We're just missing, so they don't gain turn meter, which is, which is interesting. This is an interesting byproduct. It's like side synergy or something. Bonus synergy. I, I have no idea what, what words to use here, guys. So, uh, just trying to, you know, get good banners. Eventually just fracture poor Commander Luke to death. Something Wampa couldn't accomplish. Alright, so we got this Sith Eternal Squad. And... So, we have to tend in burners. So, okay, so... Cool. 
He's got his link done. Not, not to be confused with LinkedIn. And now we need to try to kill the ads here, guys. Uh, it's an important thing. We need to kill the ads, if we can. So we're shooting Dooku. Uh, that's pretty neat. Can we say Nuku? Like we're trying to nuke Dooku? Either way, we got we got the snipe on Malak here, and then of course a heal Dooku all the way full. So that was maybe a little bit short-sighted of me. Now, now that I'm I'm reconsidering this, guys, I probably should have just tried to kill Dooku first, because that Malak didn't well, he didn't really care one way or another. Like he he would have been healed to full, but that that didn't really matter for him. So anyways, they got the link again, and it's looking like we can't even kill old Dooku here. It's a little bit embarrassing, to be honest. His boss can just taunt, or should he just shoot? I guess he can shoot, get stunned. I don't know. Poor old Grief can't can't handle the lightning though. So uh, sent it. So we've already sent in two burners, guys. It doesn't doesn't really matter what we're what we're trying. Like we may as well. Just I sent in Sabine just because she gets all those exposes. Maybe we can just take out take out Dooku here. So okay. Um, but the, we've got him down to a to a single his single self. And part of part of my plan here, guys, going into the back zone was I needed to make sure I could beat either Lord Vader or Sith Eternal in the back, at, or both potentially without using a Galactic Legend. And so, what what we're doing here now is, <laughs> now we're using Wampa. And this actually took a ridiculously long time, folks. It just takes a long, and it's terrifying because Wampa does ramp damage. He doesn't ramp it, like, enough. Though, or at least it didn't feel like enough. So, you guys can just see it. This is on, like, I, I forget. It's twice, three times the speed. It, it's, uh... You know, it takes a while though, so... Because here's the thing, he gets deceived on us enough times, and, and when we get... When we are deceived, we can't hit him back. And so he regrows, he re regenerates his protection uh, quite a bit, and his health by, hit, by doing damage. We can't hit back, and when we don't hit back, we don't gain turn meter. And so it's, it's just this mess, because he's lapping us as well. I should probably make my Womp a little faster. You can see I put it on auto for a little bit. But on auto, he doesn't do his Icebreaker move. You can see he's just not doing it. He's not doing his Icebreaker move, because it's an AoE. It's supposed to hit other people, and, and like multiple people, and because there's not multiple characters there, he's not doing Icebreaker. He needs that. He needs that. A lot, so we're, we're at two minutes, guys, and I'm like, are we, did we ramp up enough? We barely did. So finally, Zerg down that Sith Eternal. So th thank goodness. And now, he has Aiden. We can't use Wampa on Aiden, so I suppose let's use Darth Revan. I mean, it's not a great Aiden anyways, but... Uh, let's see. I did the life leech on Iden just because I want to get I want to get death mark on her is is what the hope is. If we can take if we can use death mark on her, then she just dies anyways. And now what did we get? Fifty five? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. I mean, we had to use Malak. We had to use the full team, but we're good to go. But he has a Darth Revan team in the back as well here. And I, I was like, I don't know what I can use to beat this Darth Revan team. Frankly, like this, this is pretty terrifying. We don't want to mult. He's got, he's got enough teams. He's gonna be able to multi-shot me. Um, gosh, I guess I didn't show you guys the back zone. I, I apologize for that. So, I, I don't. He's got enough teams that I, I don't know if he's gonna fail any. So we really need to be pinching banners. So I took this Padme team. You guys can see how dicey it gets against a full Relic 7 Darth Revan team. Like, we got Deathmark on us a few times, but we got the right rolls and just barely squeezed by. At the very least, we would have killed Basti, I think, regardless. So that, that was good. Now he's got this Darth Vader team. This is up top. And uh, so one thing I did, I kept Commander Luke on offense this time, just, just to see what we could do. And so we're taking Commander Luke to try to one-shot this Darth Vader.
Let's, uh... Well, once the one DPS guy is gone, I mean, IG and Quill are kind of DPS, like passive DPS, but they're more like support. Like, they they do a decent amount of damage. It's just... You, you need something else. Like, they're, they're not they're not the main attraction, kind of. And this Mon Mothma team just, just keeps going. I mean, <laughs> it's... It, it means business that this Lando team didn't really have much of a chance, frankly. Which is good, because this guy plays a lot of teams on defense, guys. Plays a lot of teams on defense, in fact. So, yeah, sorry for not showing you guys. There's back zone. Maybe I did. I, I don't know. I'm tired, guys. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long trip. We were in the pod fest. All right, so... He's got this Ray with Finn team, and, and so my Echo is fast enough to go first, but but not, not the rest of my guys. So, okay, we got the stun on BB-8. That's good. And then, I mean, this, this, gets, this gets a little bit dicey, guys, honestly. Um, I mean, so we get the undispellable buff immunity from Echo, which, which is super helpful on Rey, because eventually we want her to not have buffs. <laughs> that's so hard to understand, Rey. You can't have buffs. Like, stop stop acting like you can have buffs. Okay. So who do we take out? Like, Resistance Hero Finn is making Rey taunt all the time, and apparently the undispellable buff thing, like, it <laughs> just, just didn't, like, stick or something. I mean, this, this is getting dicey. If, if Hunter dies, he's our DPS. Like, we, we could be in huge trouble, in fact. We really just need to take her out if we can. Luckily, BB-8's generating a ton of debuffs for us. So that, that's nice. Useful of him. Or, I guess they're buffs, but we can dispel them for more turn meter. That is what I mean. All right, let's, let's take out BB-8 here if we can. We really don't want Illuminated Destiny to happen. So, yeah, kind of a sketchy fight. This guy plays put down a really tough defense, though. We had to use Wampa and Bounty Hunters both to kill his... his that, that's the Eternal Squad. So, kind of hurting for teams here. All right, we've got the Boba team. Because we'll use, because we use some Jedi to, to deal with it. Uh, at first, I was gonna use Luke lead, but then I was like, you know what? Basti makes it so that they can't stick their debuffs on us, and it, it also gives us a, bu a huge buffer so that if they do get a little damage on us, we'll still hopefully, in theory, be able to, you know, weather it and still get good banners. So. Poor old Zalbar didn't realize he was messing with Luke, who hates tanks on, on like, uh, on a, on a very personal level. He just, uh, destroys them. So, alright, get the buffs on Luke. Gosh, Boba. Just a scary Relic 8 Boba. Everyone, the fact that everyone has a Relic 8 Boba is so scary, guys. It's, it's terrifying on, on a, I want to say on a visceral level. I don't, I don't know what that means, though, exactly. So, I don't know if it's accurate. All right, <laughs> epic. Got got the kill. Wonderful. Okay. All right. I guess he has one more squad in the back. I, I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. So we're showing you the squads here at least. He's got he's got Chimera and Executor both. Dear Lord. Okay. So here's here's another sortie team. I don't remember if she has relics yet or not. I don't think she does. I, I don't know. But this is a very similar team to what I have, except Droidica is actually, she's giving a ton of offense to Droidica. I'm, I'm using Hero Finn, uh, like Finn Finn Poe here, uh, just, just because, yeah, okay, so no relics on her. Uh, we, we're trying to do more DPS here, guys. We're trying to make DPS happen. Much like fetch. <laughs> so stop trying to make fetch happen. Anyways, Finn Finn Poe can work against General Grievous squads. You just, uh... It, because you do a lot of damage. That's that's the only reason. Okay, so we saved the we saved the dispel there, and luckily Droidica just doesn't do much damage apparently. Like he keeps he keeps trying to focus me down lately, and and it, 
I don't know, it seems seems like Droidica doesn't one-shot people the way I thought he used to. I don't know if the people are just modding him too fast or what, but it's just not, not happening that much. Alright, cool. 53. Pretty ugly banners, but, you know, you kind of get through it. And there we go, we got through squads, guys. And now we have ships, which I think we've refreshed forwarding a little bit. Oh yeah, so he's got he's got Executor, but he's got the... the IG-11, or sorry, IG-2000 version. So, we, we take out IG-2000, and it's supposed to be an easy win after that, but... Then, um, you know, Xanadu Blood comes in, and Biggs dies. Get in our friend here, take out Xanadu Blood, wonderful, wonderful. So, it's feeling... I don't know, pretty optimistic right now. Alright, uh, Razor Crest got killed once, and, and then they, they got the heal, and Biston died, and Slave One's here, taunting, killing our ships. Shoot. Alright, can we take out Slave One at least, please? No? Death Star's here? What? That was a Death Star over Coruscant? What the hell, man? Alright, so, th that went sideways real fast. So let's, uh, apparently transition real quick to using Finalizer to try to clean up. And trying to figure out exactly what we want to do. So, do the big hit on Slave 1. I mean, this is a pretty non-standard counter. I wanted to thank everyone, by the way, for giving me all the feedback on my... A couple GACs ago, I didn't show the fleets, and pretty much everyone, unanimously, the, the talk, like a few people said they didn't care about ships, but for the most part, everyone wants to see ships on these videos, so we're, we're keeping them in, keep them in. A few people accused me of trying to make more money, that I was being greedy, and I'm like, it's actually more effort for no gain, but, um, you know. You, you can, you should f continue to feel like, um, no, you shouldn't. I'm not trying to screw people on money, I promise. <laughs> trying to make ads. You getting greedy, Zareth? No. No, man. <laughs> it's ridiculous. What an accusation. Anyways, got through Executor there. Thank goodness. Alright. So we get the dot. This is the this is the one with TIE Interceptor. As you can see. As evidenced by the fact that TIE Interceptor is here. And Man, there's so many variants of these teams. I, I, I struggle struggle to kind of, uh, you know, note the differences, categorize the differences. It's, uh, but one way or another. Okay, we got to get through this, this bomber if we can. We have the mark thing on TIE Pilot or TIE Interceptor, but that, that's even, that's already gone. Okay, so let's, uh, I guess, try to take out Interceptor now. Got him. Got her. And Ty Reaper is someone we wanted to see, actually. I, I mean... <laughs> I, I don't know. Just, uh... Se seems like an easier candidate than some others. Alright. Chimera gets a turn. Destroys half of my banners. Which is wonderful. Just takes them away. Gone with the wind, so to speak. So... 61 banners. Terrible. Terrifyingly bad banners. 61 is so bad, guys. Woof. Dropped like 12 banners there. Crazy. And then he has a Tarkin fleet with very little substance, guys. In fact, we just destroyed it. Demolished it. Goodbye. And the final score for me was 2004. Let's see, I dropped 79 total banners. So that's, uh, let's see, Sith Eternal, we dropped 30, base, and then on Fleets, we dropped 20 against Finalizer, so we, we dropped 50 on, on its own, 50 built in, and then another, you know, 29, ba like, <laughs> a huge amount of those were just on that Chimera, so kind of efficient in some ways, just like two fails is, is all uh, on his board, and... Uh, so I'll show you guys. We're, we're doing a little something a little different in terms of uh, 
Uh, you guys don't get to see the immediate results. You guys get to see uh, one of the first zone and then the second zone, and I'll show you guys the final score. So here we go. All right. So he uh, first off at the front, the top zone of mine. He one shot for almost perfect banners, really close. And uh, I'm like, well, he, he does have he has, he has Star Killer, and he has three GLs. So we, we got to the back, and he actually one shot all of my GLs immediately, for for almost perfect banners. And I was like, um, at this point he dropped like maybe 15 total banners, and then he dropped a couple on Darth Vader. So, so thank goodness for that. I was like, man, I think he's running out of teams. He has to be running out of team somehow. And then he went to the top zone. He dropped a couple on Newt, a couple on Boba, which is exciting. And at the end of the day, folks, I ended up beating him by almost 60 banners, even though he started off so strong. And this was, <laughs> he, he attacked like his final attacks were like within the last 10 minutes of, of the round. So, cutting it close. Final round. He, so, here's the thing, guys. You set that front zone, and a lot of people one-shot your front zone. And uh, the whole goal of the front zone is to take away their good stuff. You want them to you overuse, or you want them to underuse and fail their attacks on you. That That's the goal. And... So sometimes he'll fail on your on your uh, front zone, but usually the one shot. And at the end of the day, it, it the front zone. Don't get too discouraged with the front zone. The back zone is is what matters, and that that's exactly what happened. Even though he killed all my GLs, like he plays so much on defense compared to what he normally does, he just didn't have the right teams to be able to take me down. So. So glad to win one at Podfest. Very distracted by a convention. Uh, it's, it's a lot of interesting stuff to to do and see. And so I placed a defense, and then uh, you know, glad I got to win one. That, that's great. Um, especially because this group is really tough. <laughs> Podfest was fun though. Uh, hopefully you guys will see some of the results of that. I talked to a few people who are really good at making YouTube videos, actually. Ironically, the most the thing I learned most at Podfest was about YouTube things, things that you guys won't necessarily all see, but you'll see the evidence of some of it, I think, over time. One way or another, though, folks, this this is it. I, I, I don't think this is the very best quality of video that I've done, but this is about a, as well as I can do. I'm actually one full uh, GAC match behind those, so we'll, we'll get caught up sometime this week, hopefully, and yeah. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. What what things did you think were interesting? What things did you think were dastardly of me? Now, I, I don't know what that means, but one way, one way or another, guys, thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Zeras prevails, even at PodFest. <laughs> Take care, everyone. <laughs>